Hello, my name is Ken Small, and I'm with SSA Architecture in Las Vegas, Nevada. For those of you who have seen our three dozen videos uh, that I've done for various topics on uh, SSA Architecture and the work that I've done here, um, you may not have asked this question, but others have. Uh, we've gotten requests from uh, mostly architectural interns or high school students who are thinking about becoming architects, asking uh, what the office looks like and how it all works. So I'm going to take a quick run through the office and explain what we have and how it all works. I imagine this will break up into several of the 20 minute size videos that we usually make. Um, so I'm here in the lobby area of SSA Architecture. Um, we've been in this location, I guess I should say it's Friday afternoon on, in 2018, uh, August 2nd, and uh, we've been in this location for 20 years, just maybe a little bit uh, longer than that. And I uh, came here originally thinking I was only going to be here for three years, but we've been here a long time. It's been a good spot. Um, this is the reception area, the, the lobby, if you will. And um, when we first moved here 20 years ago, there would always be a clerical staff member here at the front desk. And uh, he or she um, would greet whoever came in and deal with FedEx and the mailman. But uh, no one has sat here in many years because uh, we just don't function like that anymore. But the desk continues on, and now we have the bell for coming in at the front. Um, we also uh, have done a lot of feng shui work here in the front lobby area. Um, these uh, two um, toads and uh, some flowers and a few other items that you'll see around here are related to the feng shui. And um, uh, actually in 2017 we put this VCT floor pattern down and uh, it's a very positive energy feng shui um, layout and uh, so that can show you that you don't have to have a lot of expense to have a positive vibe if you believe in feng shui. So uh, this is probably my most favorite project ever which was uh, before we even moved here and uh, this was a small house, probably the world's ugliest house that was done for a company called IGS. Uh, they wanted to make it look like a professional building and so we usually start our tour of the office with this project. And as you can see, it, it does look quite professional. Um, this is the uh, view from the street and then this is the uh, interior lobby, uh, what they called uh, Command Central at the time. And then turning around behind me, we have uh, John S. Park Elementary School, which we won uh, numerous awards on, and actually there were more awards than are shown here on this uh, presentation um, frame. The reason why is because uh, we created this frame to give to the school district after we won uh, one, two, three, four, five awards, and then after that when we won more awards, the head of the design department asked if we could have a frame with the more awards and when I went back to the framer and asked him if he could take it apart and add the additional awards he said it costs the same money as just uh, building a new one so we kept the one with only five awards on it and made a new one for the school district and it hung over there for many years until uh, they moved and now I don't know what happened to their version but I've got mine and uh, I think this is around 2004 that we won this. And then over here we have a presentation that we did for uh, Bally's uh, Gaming Systems. And uh, it was uh, something they were considering building and didn't, but it's uh, used as a demonstration of a presentation technique. And like a lot of these things that are hanging here are uh, canceled projects because um, if a project goes forward then the client keeps the presentation materials and if it stops then they leave it behind. So the tendency is for us to not have to want to pay for mounting and hanging another one. We have a nice one, we don't want to throw it away, so we hang it on the wall. And um, so over here we have a um, presentation that was done for a 22-story um, residential condominium project that was done in um, around 2007. 
uh, for a company called Pel Pelican Development. Um, this is a, uh, a site plan that was done for a commercial uh, development with a big retail store and multiple pad sites for a company called Territory Inc. And then this is a more recent project. This is about two years old. It's a super green building medical marijuana project. And um, we had uh, tons and tons of skylights on it. And it was built out of structural insulation, insulated panels. And um, uh, had solar panels here on the side. And um, then you see a little bit more of our feng shui stuff, the, the waving. Um, the waving uh, cat and um, some awards that we've won over time. And then um, this is typical of what was submitted for a uh, planning and zoning case for an industrial park. So we designed the building, they got the zoning approved. Uh, a car dealership from uh, California and um, a theater that we designed for here in Vegas. And then um, all walking across the room here, we have, um, these are not awards. Um, what they are is that uh, a couple of the local um, magazines do ratings of local architects. And then after you're rated, after you're ranked, you can order a plaque if you want. And so I um, started doing that um, in 2005 under the current company name. And so we have 2005 through, there's actually one for 2018, but we haven't, we haven't hung it up yet. And then um, over here, again, uh, various awards. And uh, this is a, uh, a representation of a certain model building technique. It started out as a rough model using foam core. And then we uh, put paper around the outside of it. And um, so again, we keep this as a uh, ability to show a client who might need that presentation technique what it looks like in the end result. Um, then going here into the conference room, um, our conference room has, of course, a projector screen. And behind the projector screen is our marker board. And um, we have a big conference table for about 14. And uh, it turned out that uh, we designed a bigger conference table than we actually needed. But uh, we've enjoyed it. Nice granite countertop and, I mean, a uh, uh, tabletop. And um, this room is a little bit bigger than what we turned out to have a use for. But again, um, when we moved in here, we thought we were only going to be here for three years, and that looked like uh, the right size at the time. Um, then we, we do tend to use these marker boards more during our uh, normal office meetings, inter-office, to draw for each other what it is that we're trying to explain and things like that. And then over here, I have some sample projects that I use to show potential customers when they come in about um, uh, similar projects. A lot of people don't really know what's included in a set of construction documents, and for that reason, we have these. And then um, here on the wall, a lot of these are my certifications, but they're also things like college diplomas for people who work here. And then the same thing over on the other side of the door over here. And then um, this room tends to collect things like these uh, tile samples. Uh, that our interior designer showed to a client. And um, uh, there's some more different pieces laying around, um, things that we considered or are considering and um, maybe should decide to throw away because the client didn't select them, but we're not done with the job yet. So coming back out into the lobby reception area here, um, you see this video running, this is uh, me and the YouTube video, and the reason why we have it running is to entertain clients when they come in while they're waiting for a meeting to start. You would normally hear my voice over that, but we've muted it so that you can hear what I'm trying to tell you now. So here we have uh, probably about two dozen uh, examples of different presentation techniques and different kinds of projects, and so when I 
am uh, taking a new customer through the office and explain to them what we can do. Generally speaking, we're you know, showing them examples of, of similar projects or ideas. And um, a lot of this stuff tends to be big projects or government work. So this is uh, Sandy Valley Elementary School, which we did a design of mm, 04, 05, something like that. And uh, it's a completely daylit school, and um, so or, or building, I should say. And um, so a lot of people didn't know what day daylighting was at the time. So we have this um, drawing here to show people what that looks like. And um, so moving on, um, we have um, different presentation technique here from uh, coming out of uh, a different piece of software than the other one. And then um, this uh, Southern Highlands was a presentation technique that comes out of some software that draws uh, flat images instead of 3D. And, um, uh, and then we have these uh, different versions or different views of this uh, tavern. So if people are trying to get a tavern approved, they know what it is is uh, necessary to show to get through the planning and zoning process. And then um, around behind here, the behind our, our camera person, um, you can see an example of a hand-built model. Um, we're actually not doing any hand-built models too much anymore. Uh, I think the last one, we did a repair on one about two or three years ago, but there's no, there's no call for them anymore. And so it's, a, it's kind of a dying art, but uh, it's a, a nice project. Um, the reason why I have this one is the school district ordered it and it hung on the principal's wall at Twin Mint Lakes Elementary School for a couple of years, but they never would pay for it. So after a while the principal didn't want it anymore and they didn't pay their bill. So we came and got it and it's hung on our wall since then. So it's an involuntary $8,000 donation to the school district because they don't pay their bills. Um, and then of course our time clock and um, then these are flat files, which is not something that you see very often in an architect's office anymore, but uh, we use them to, uh, to house the work samples that you see on some of the other videos. These things can be fairly delicate, and since I bought them the flat files years ago when most architects did use them, we've continued on using them. Uh, this is what's called a stick set, and um, what a stick is, is it's this uh, metal piece that you see here that the plans hang from and then that's supposed to help the plans remain more organized although it's kind of debatable you see four of them laying here on top of the, of the flat files not put away but the theory is that when you're looking for a set of plans on a project where the drawings have been completed and they're going to be under construction then uh, they're hung in the stick set here and they're available for easy reference to go back and see what they look like. Um, and then this stuff here is just government regulation stuff, federal labor regulations, business licenses, things like that. So coming around the first corner of the first cubicle, you're in the main drafting area where we do most of our production work. And we've deliberately not clean this up or sanitized it for you because if you want to become an architect, if you're an architecture student and you want to see what it looks like, this is what it really looks like, not the sanitized version. And um, looking across this cubicle, then you can see uh, some examples again of our work, um, a small interior design board done for Tropicana Express, and then this is a a drawing that was done to show what an existing building looked like for medical marijuana sales. And then this is a planning and zoning case. And then this is an example of a presentation technique, really, really rough presentation technique that um, we used on a project to give somebody a rough idea of the building massing. So um, we have one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We have 11 workstations in this area. And um, it's Friday afternoon, so some of the staff have escaped already. But uh, this area over here isn't being used by staff right now. We have uh, 
our 3D printing. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone is here. <laughs> Cecilia, you can turn around and say hi to the camera. Hi. And um, so what I wanted to talk to you about is um, this is our original 3D model making machine. And uh, we've since abandoned it over the last couple of years, but, uh, or I guess three years ago we abandoned it. But we're using it to build 3D models. And then this is our latest and greatest 3D model building machine. And uh, here's an example of the kind of work that you're able to print out through these machines. And no, I do not claim to be the architect of the Arc de Triumph. I believe I'm a little too young for that. So, but to, we will sometimes show this to a client to get an idea of what the end result looks like. And then just some other work area stuff, uh, three hole punching and, uh, and stapling and all that is done in this area. And of course we have a, a printer. And then um, this table here was kind of an afterthought after we laid out all the cubicles and moved in. But actually what I usually use this table for is for me to uh, do plan checks with uh, production staff. So if uh, somebody thinks they're done, then I ask them to put their drawings on that table and then I'll go through them before I stamp them. Um, anyway, I think that's uh, the first half of this presentation and um, we're going to pause right here and I hope you'll come back and watch the next part. My name is Ken Small. I'm with SSA Architecture in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'd really, really, really appreciate it if you would like and share, and even if you don't like it, just dislike it, but at least give us a click down below, and um, if you share comments or you send me an email, then I'll be happy to talk to you about this. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.